Hello friends, uh, here we have a ADJ Eno Spot Pro moving head. Um, these need a cleaning and some of them uh, needed uh, their belts replaced. So there's one belt on this arm for the pitch and one belt under this here for the pan. Most of them fail on the pan, some of them fail on the pitch also, depending on the programming on, or how, how fast you drive them, uh, these can fail and they need to be replaced. Now there's a lot of gubbins inside this moving head. <coughs> this one seems to be pretty clean, I think I cleaned this before the pandemic, nevertheless I'll open it. Because from haze machines in clubs, all the glass bits get foggy, and when they get foggy, the light doesn't come out properly. It comes out really hazy and crap, really. Um, if this one will not be satisfactory dirty, I'll get another one. But. The purpose of this clip is not to show you how dirty these moving heads can be, is the purpose is to replace the belts and give them a clean. Yeah, this one is pretty clean, actually. But, if you look closely on this prism here, it's really foggy, it's not transparent. And there's this lens, there's a focusing lens, and then there's this color wheel, which I wiped, I think, yesterday. Um, see, under here, it's full of dust and crap. And there's the there's an LED um, <coughs> lens also, and that gets dirty. Usually this LED cooler gets filthy with dust. And inside here gets really clogged. To eliminate that problem, I made these filters, I 3D printed them, created them from scratch, they go like here, and this indentation here is so it can clear, yeah, you see, so it can clear the space there. This filter is just a normal piece of foam, and it helps a lot to keep these clean. Right, um, to disassemble you see, you saw there's four screws on either side and then these come off, this shell comes off and then there's a further five screws pair arm here. This is the eighth one that I'm doing so I'm getting really fast and pretty good in doing this stuff. Right. All this comes off. See what I mean? All this haze fluid kind of recondensates in these and creates creates havoc, really. All right, another five screws. Now this one seems to be pretty clean. When I get to another one that didn't have a filter on, you'll see what I mean. This gets filthy with dust. It's disgusting. This one had a filter on, so it's way better. Now, a common problem with these, see all this dust? This is scraping, this is the belt failing. That's where it is, it's just rubber, this dust. Usually this belt fails and they start slipping here. This one is pretty good. Uh, or a common problem that I found with these is this screw fails and then the head just kind of tilts so the belt doesn't tilt the head. It just goes in and doesn't do anything really. But the most common problem they have is this belt right here. You see the pan belt here? 
for some reason it gets loose and then it starts slipping and even if it slips one step one tooth then everything gets messed up and it starts going like it goes it does weird noises and it doesn't function right so that's me cleaning these right now all right here's a better example of a properly dirty one check out how much shit is on this color disc that's crazy and here you'll see it's like a little blanket between these these fins these color fins see it's like dusty as fuck this one so that's how they look initially look how matte this is what you know what I mean and that's on all the glass pieces that makes it super hazy and shit and not bright so let's get jiggy with it first thing that I want I'd like to do is there's a screw here to remove the actual lens take the standing screw out to be clean see what I mean by haze really foggy. I'll point out the difference. That's how it is before. And like I said, this is one clean example. Because that's seen worse. That's after. So like way better contrast and everything. And you can tell when it's actually functioning. The beams are contrasty and bright. These are from a club called Snobs in Birmingham. Um, since it's the pandemic, we decided to give the place a thorough clean. Give all the lights a thorough cleaning. Because there's hard life waiting for them in the future, hopefully. They are... I think they're five years old and I've been cleaning them regularly uh, maybe like once a year or something like that or one two times a year I can't remember let's clean this bit here They got moldy also, which is interesting. These lights, even though they're on the ceiling, the ceiling is not too high up. And the abuse they get is phenomenal. I found drinks on them. I don't know who gets drinks to just throw them on the ceiling, but it happens. So initially when you when you take them off the club they are disgusting. <laughs> I have to use one of those um, disposable gloves to actually touch them with From experience I I've seen they like to drink rum and coke or something with coke because they're all brown and sticky alright so four screws here to remove the this cooler grill Slash power supply for the LED. Alright. Yeah, that's the coal I'm talking about. It's even on on the inside of them, which is incredible. Okay, to remove the cooler. This these screws here you don't have to remove all of them like the whole screw 
just enough so you can clear the bit to remove this screw that actually holds the cooler in place. These are just some weights, they're put there to balance the head, so if the head is balanced there's not a lot of strain on the motors and they last because that's what you're supposed to do. I've seen lights with heads that aren't balanced and the motors always go bad on them. And no matter how much, how many times you change the motors, if they're not balanced, they're always gonna go down. Now, if you can observe, um, I actually broke these ears on these coolers because it's easier access for me to get to the actual screw that I need with a normal screwdriver yeah this is way cleaner because it had the filter on some of the other ones that the filter fell or they didn't have the filters on uh, were disgusting inside here now this is pristine <laughs> compared to what I've seen. Right, now to get to the LED, remove these further four screws. And there it is, the LED assembly. This is the first lens that I was talking about. Three long screws hold this in place. And this little tiny board here is the 100 watt LED or 60 watt LED or something like that. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this is really foggy. So. The wipes that I'm using are some wipes from Virus, Virus Love Plus. Disinfectant wipes. But they worked miracles till now, because you just use them, throw them. Um, and they're really strong, so like they remove a lot of gunk and shit, which is great. Now for the color wheel. On the inside I like to wash it with this wet wipe. So get these all nice and nice and agitated. And then come with a clean cloth, like a dry cloth. And just finish the job off. I'm making this clip kind of in a hurry 
because usually it takes it takes around three to four hours to do one of these properly and now all this color wheel has an open section with no glass and then the gobo wheel has two gobos that are glass so that's one of them and that's the other one so through the open section of the color wheel I can get to the under section of the gobo wheel to clean these and again with a clean cloth okay. alright, now we put the lens back When you disassemble such a thing, there's a sensor wire here. I had, see, this is really tight in there. Make sure, ah, when you put it back, make sure the sensor wire is still in there, because otherwise, if the LED overheats, it's gonna die. With the sensor wire in there, um, it doesn't let the LED overheat. Therefore, it doesn't die. We really had no problem with these lights for like up to now, and they're still working strong. I mean, if you take care of things again, they last. Oh, actually, I'm lying. We had one of these LEDs die on us. But that was in the days before I made these um, filters on the intake fan. <coughs> and we actually had to replace the LED module. But after the filters, strong. I got the filter idea from some FFA amps. They use this the same technique and they're really clean inside after five years they're not spotless but they're really clean so I thought to myself why not apply these this technique to lights and it kind of works I'm happy about that these screws are made of but they I always find myself cleaning this bit of metal shards it's soft metal it's almost like lead but it's not lead obviously in the background this guy is playing Half-Life Alex um, Half-Life is, was, and still will be my favorite game ever. And after 20 years, well not 20 years, but a long time, they released a sequel. So it was Half-Life 1, and then 2, Episode 1, Episode 2, and they left it. The bastards from Valve. And now they made this sequel, but you can only play it if you have... Um, an Oculus Rift or like a VR headset which I don't and I'm not planning on buying it soon so the easy way of me actually seeing what's going on is following this guy on YouTube <laughs> he played the whole game and recorded it, no commentary which is great Okay, now the focusing lens. 
that's the focusing lens right here. This one. So I need to clean it underneath and on top. Of the top one far too is easy because I can have access to it. But with the bottom section, I have this, these tweezers, and I can strap this cloth around the tweezers, like so. And shove them in here like that, and just see how much dirt came from this lens, it's impressive. So wet the lens with this. And then do the same with the cloth. Now that's done. Now for the prism. Clean the prism. Same thing for the prism. The fact that it's a rotating prism is actually helping because there's not a lot of space be behind it. You can just rotate it. You know? There you go. Let's put this in. Give it a spin if I can. Yeah, so the transparency now is insane. <laughs> now what I like doing is powering it on with the wire that's not here to see if the focus lens actually works, if the focus motor works. But first I can just put the main lens back in. On the power cord, let's plug it in. Okay, it starts, it does its thing. Okay, and now if you go menu, backwards. Focus adjust. See the focus lens? It works. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so that's working. Auto test. Cycling colors. And then it's going to be cycling gobos. Spinning the gobos. And then prism. And spinning prism. Sweet. Now I need to replace this belt. This one looks a bit bad. So, to replace the belt, take these two screws out. And then this sensor board thing comes out. Gotta replace the belt. Okay, and my method is take it all the way down and kind of bring this outwards and then the belt just slides out there might be another official method but this is my method all right Before you replace anything, make sure it's the same size, which it is. 
make sure the writing on it is the same which is not here but maybe that's the whatever batch number or stuff like that yeah this is the same B175MXL8 now also because there was a lot of rubber um, dust in here it's good to clean this wheel and this wheel because if the rubber goes between them teeth you can mess up the, f you know, the future rubber. You really want these cogwheels here to be as clean as possible, so the belt actually goes in the cogs. as opposed to slipping out of them. Alright, to put the belt back, just put it firstly on this. Firstly on the little section and then align the teeth here and then just spin it ah, one time. Boom. That's it. Out with the old, in with the new. Now, how they made this to compensate for the fact that this is not perfectly round? The motor, the motor is on some springs, and it see it slides up and down. Now you gotta tighten these screws up properly. Okay, make sure this is not loose in any way, and that should be it for this section. So we can put the lids back on, so we can put this back on. Now how I made these um, filter thingies is, you see this lip here goes in here like that okay and then you put the screws back on Okay, I'm not putting these arms in yet because we still need to get to this belt to replace it. So to get to that, start by removing these screws here. Okay. For the base section. The base section is from two parts, so then this comes off. See what I mean? No filter. Disconnect this plug here for the display. Now for the handle section, you need a 5 mil Allen key. There's two 5 mil Allen bolts here. Allen number one. And two. And the handle comes off <laughs> like so. And this having no filter is way dustier. Now there's some extra three screws here to hold this. 
this fan plate. Behold, the proper dust. So, if you can imagine, this would have been in this light with no filter. So as easy as it was to replace the tilt belt, I'm afraid to say to replace the pan belt is not that easy <coughs> because you need to disassemble everything. So see all this bunch of wires? They run through the belt. So to get to this belt here, which is that one that you can actually see now, I need to take off this section, disconnect all these wires and then there's five screws that hold the bearing to this section ah, to take out that section I need to take out this quick release plate that has four allen screws and under that there's another set. See, there's one, two, three, one, two, three screw holes for this section right here. So you'll see while I'm doing it. Well, actually, yeah, there's a hole here. You can just get to that screw. But still, I need to clean in there, so I'll just do it the proper way. Or so once this is out, give it a clean and a wipe. Oh, I forgot to take out this side, the, the other handle. So that's me doing that now. And the same three screws here. To remove said nut, I'm using this nose plier angled. I'm just putting it back so I don't lose it. This cable tie needs to go. And you could take a picture of these, but I did it before so I know which one is what. And start removing them. Let's go. When you remove these don't pull the wire, try and pull the plug because they will snap <sighs> All right. so these are off another thing that needs removing is the power cord for this section minus plus, no deorientation and it also says 28 volts and GND. Obviously, the GND is black. Okay. What else do we need to remove? These two here, these two magnetic sensors. One. And two. These are the DMX. And the microphone I need to remove the power from here. That should be it now. <laughs> under there should be six screws. Along it, yeah, there, there they are. 
Well, there is a catch, you need to remove the power supply also. And that's dropping now. Okay. Now this whole assembly comes off. There it is right here. I don't get it, you really have to try to get these drinks three meters high up. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe they do bets. Let's see how many lights can I intoxicate. <laughs> There's the power supply, remove the power plug. Okay. Spark supply. I did have to change a couple of these maybe like three or four throughout time can't remember what was the cause but they die and the light stopped working obviously but overall pretty decent lights these I like them they have focusing, they have rotating gobos prisms I actually did a really cool light show with them I'm proud of it. I made it in Quartz Composer. I'll put a link in the description. They are really nice lights to play with. Okay, now let's further disassemble this motherfucker. So the main board goes off. Out. Okay, once that is out, we can get to these screws here that hold this plate, this sensor plate in place, and there's two screws either side. And this sensor plate can go off now. Okay, and now that we got to that section, that's the screws that hold this plate to the bearing. One, two, three, four, five. So let's start removing them. The pretty tough screws. And I had some that got rounded. And I'll pull the wires out. Yes, and finally we got to the belt section. Now this belt is not not really bad, but for the purpose of this clip I'm gonna change it. It's just a bit loose doesn't look eaten too much so the method is the same I'm just gonna try and take it out like that come on come on there you go Out with the old. In with the new. Uh, try and do the same thing. Clean this up first. You don't want any of the rubber residue to mess up your new belt. Okay. And then put this back. Start with the sprocket. And just spin it into place if you can. That is. There we 
go. That's better. Now what I like doing is loosening up these screws to free up the motor springs to actually tension the belt. Once I'm happy with the tension, tighten them back in. Cleaning up these fins here also because these are like some sensor fins. And they tell the main boards the actual position of the moving head. It's got an opto sensor here with an LED on one side and an optical sensor on the other side and when these things pass through them it creates ones and zeros and that's how the light knows where it actually is and the thing is if this belt slips the light still thinks it's on that position and it tries to move the head back and forth according to the you know the reading it knows and if this physically slipped you get problems it's only enough it only needs to slip one time and then if this starts scraping the belt then that's that messes up the teeth and it gets exponentially worse over time Okay, and now assembly is the opposite of the disassembly.